Today we are focusing on the Generous June initiative. So uh, this morning I'm talking about giving. And I've chosen to stand here near the Mother, Mother's Union banner and I've placed the crucifix from the Lady Chapel here as a focus. And when we think about giving, we start with God. God's nature is to give generously, persistently, and extravagantly. Last week, we celebrated the Trinity, that God is one God, three persons, a communion of love. And that shared love is self-giving. And it flows out from God to create the world and to bless it. And this banner reminds me of God's generous giving. God gives the gift of life that we are all blessed with. Here is the mother tenderly cradling her new child. God gives the gift of the beautiful earth that we enjoy. And God gives us the gift of Jesus who comes to save us. And here we see the extent of God's self-giving love, emptying himself of his divinity to be born as a helpless baby and dying on the cross to redeem us. Such sacrificial giving for us. And Paul in our Romans reading today reminds us that we don't deserve such love, that we are sinners. Yet God's love and generosity are so great. I was struck in these two images by how vulnerable Jesus is. Generous giving makes us vulnerable. We're offering ourselves to others and we're exposed. We're giving something of ourselves, our time, our talents, and we might be rejected. And sometimes that might happen. But more likely, our generosity will make a difference to others and be life-giving. In our Gospel reading today, Jesus sees how in need people are. They are harassed and helpless, like so many of us today, stressed and unsure how to respond to the tough challenges of life. He sees their need for God, their need for the comfort and hope that only God can offer. And he has compassion for them. But there is so much need, so Jesus calls his disciples and he gives them authority and sends them out as partners in his work. They are to cure the sick and to proclaim the good news. I wonder how the disciples felt. It's quite early on in Jesus's ministry and they have so much to learn. I wonder if they feel anxious, unsure, vulnerable about being sent out. But Jesus believes in them. You received without payment, give without payment, he tells them, reminding them they have received so much from God, forgiveness, love, life, and Jesus himself, all freely given to them in love. And in response, they are sent out to give sacrificially to others. And God also calls us to this work. Like the disciples, we are forgiven, loved and blessed. And there is so much need. Perhaps we feel ill-equipped and anxious. But we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit to help and guide us. As we respond to God's generosity by trying to be people who give generously and sacrificially of our money, our talent and our time. To share some of that abundant love that God lavishes on us. And this is a journey. 
It takes practice. We don't change our habits overnight. We take small steps at a time. But there is always more that we can give as we journey deeper into faith and follow Jesus. Every day we make lots of decisions about how we're going to live. And this week, I encourage you to take some time to review and think about how you spend your money, your time and your gifts. Yes, it's a strange time and we're not in the normal pattern of living that we're used to. But is there ever a good time? Faith asks us to take each day as sacred and to use it wisely as a gift from God. So think about how you spend your money. What does it say about your priorities? You don't need to be wealthy to be generous with money. Look at the story of the widow's mite. She had very little, but she gave generously out of what she had. Could you give a proportion of your income to the church and to charities to enable the vital work that's done, if you don't already? Is there an element of sacrifice in your giving? Sacrificial giving has an impact on your lifestyle. Could you give more? Think about how you spend your time and your talents. Could you do more to reach out to those who might be struggling? Are there members of the congregation you haven't seen for ages who might be lonely? Could you give them a ring or send an email or a card to lift their spirits? even if you don't know them that well. When you reply to an email, could you spend a little longer writing it and add in an appreciative comment to show you value the other person? How could you share some of God's generous love today and every day through the resources that you have been given? Amen.